Hi viewers and friends, welcome to my page. Today I am teaching on Blood Guiltiness Part 2. The last one I taught you Part 1 and I showed you how serious the matters of blood are with God. Today under Blood Guiltiness Part 2, I'll be discussing on virginity and rape virginity and rape first i want us to understand that god wants to take all the glory in our lives god wants his due glory to be given to him in our lives there are things god can never tolerate when you tamper with what is the pride of God. So when God creates the baby girl, God created the baby girl all. And the Bible says that God took a second look into all the works of his hands. And he saw that they were perfect, including the girl and the young boy that is born into the world. Perfect, untampered with. So virginity is that which has never been explored that which has never been tampered with that which has never been broken into forcefully or against the will of the person so the essence of the of the hymen of the woman is to preserve it is god's pride in preserving the woman in saying to the world this woman is decent is intact is complete is clean is pure is whole and is set for God's glory set for God's glory if she is allowed to grow and marry that way it brings additional blessing to the home it brings additional blessing to husband and wife, then to the house, then to the children. Then it, it opens them up. That is taking somebody to the height of the fullness of God's glory expressed in that person according to creation. Whereas, if it is the other way around, forcefully tampered with, you know, tampered with when the person knows nothing was innocent and ignorant, all those things, you know, it, it attracts severe penalty of life till you can live your life and live the earth. You will never discover where this spiritual attack is coming from. It's coming from the issue of blood. I said, when you tamper with the amen, blood is shed. Now, depending on how you tampered with it, if it is gloriously by marital consent, you tamper with it, it brings all those blessings I'm talking about. But if it is forceful, you that committed the crime, you stand to be destroyed. You stand to bear the consequences all through your life. You and your children and your children's children after you. So whenever you commit a crime of blood, don't think that it ends with you. It doesn't end with you. In Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 23, verse 3, the Bible says, And they committed wardoms in Egypt. Wow, wardom different idol worshipping in different shrines, different altars, different magical circles, psychic, anyhow you call them, those are all wrong altars. You go to secret societies, all these Freemasonry, Oboni, um, Amok, all these are wrong altars. And these wrong altars will make, will defile, it will defile your affections and make your affections vile. So you begin to do unimaginable things, going against the glory of God, standing against the will of God in everything you do. So what did they do again? They committed wardoms in their youth, even before you know something. Many neighborhoods, that is what happens. You keep a child to rest on the veranda, or you ask a neighbor's child, or a relative, cousin, nephew, please look after this child, let me come. Before you come, he has tampered with the child. And he thinks that, that those were what? Fawns in the youthful days. But those are the things that will block you 
block you contend with every every good thing you want to do in life that blood that innocent blood that child you tampered with you can never go free and these are things people don't always confess these are things pastors don't ever preach even pastors are guilty you have not dealt with the sins of your youth you have not done the restitution because you said god forgave no when jesus forgives you you do restitution those you hurt don't you see them it's just like being in possession of something stolen something you took now why do you restitute those ones but you see a lady the woman go and restitute go to the altar go go and tell your pastor go and tell the lady go and tell the parents go and restitute let them know that why this girl was not able to go to school and became depressed it was because of you why this girl's life turned so there are a lot of unrestituted things around you which you ought to have made your crooked path straight at the point of salvation but you know what? Some people are not even safe. So they continue with the sins of their youth as it piles up, piles up abominable, wicked repercussions against them. They are still continuing. So what were they doing? They were their breast pressed. A child with a small breast, of which the breast of the child is confined only to the nipple area. But somebody is going to begin to press that small breast, pull it, press it, pull it. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing with an innocent child? And not only that, and then they bruised the teeth of their virginity. That hymen is what the Bible calls the teeth. There you go and bruise. You bruise, you crush, or you tamper with the virginity of the child. Now, this is why most sorrows can never end. Because you have one, taking God's glory, of which God says he will not share his glory with another. So that thing you did, you have shared, you have taken the glory of God. So it is the duty of God to punish you. It is the duty of God to block you. It is the duty of God to cast darkness on your ways. I don't know how many girls you would have done that. You would have tampered with the teeth of their virginity. That is to tamper with the hymen. Because if you tamper with the hymen, there will be blood. Now that blood is a sacrifice of the perfection if it is done by marriage, proper marital contraction. But otherwise, if it is done the other way around, it is a sacrifice to the devil. And the hands of the devil can never depart out of your house. So if you commit the sin of disvirginating, of tampering, of raping a child, whether a male child or a female child, it bears the same the gravity of penalty god is extremely against it in in ezekiel chapter 35 verse 6 let me show you what will happen to you he said therefore as i live saith the lord god i will prepare thee unto blood what does that mean your wife will be having miscarriages your children will be dying and not only that you can have blood complication as health problem Go and check. Most people have blood complication as health problem. You will notice that they were rapists or, you know, they had committed all this nonsense. And the next thing says what? It says, and blood shall pursue thee. Do you know how blood pursues you? That is, it complains. Blood. You see the way blood, the blood of Abel pursued Cain. Cain thought nobody knew. But the blood of Abel kept pursuing Cain, pursued him into the presence of God. God came asking him, and he now came, packed his things, left his parents so that they would not know. Then the blood still kept pursuing him. He pursued him out of the house that would, would have gained the house on everything. He packed out, left, went and established his own family. Yet the blood pursued him until his fifth grandson became what? A murderer. That was not enough. The blood pursued him until during the flood, we are all of them, all of Cain's seed perished. There is nothing of the seed of Cain remained. Now, that, that is even that. But it's worse when it has to do with virginity. Breaking somebody's virginity that is not your child. You know, something is so bad that father does it to the daughter. Father does that to the daughter. Blood will pursue you. 
the Bible says, because thou hast not hated blood, because you were playing with it, because you, you were consuming it, because you thought it was fun, even blood shall pursue you. So you begin to live a life of torment, a life of torture, a life of losing lives, losing properties. Can I shock you? That even when you try to say you want to raise up chicken, God allows you, you put 1,000, 2,000 chicken, all of them will die. All that is the blood, that thing you tampered with in that child, that phone you claim you had when you were 18, and now you are born again, and you've never done anything about it, and you have never been delivered directly, that specifically delivered, because every blood has to be shed on the altar. That's why he said, it, he said, I have given you this blood, so that it can be on the altar. So when you shed blood and it is not on God's altar, then it is on satanic altar. So Satan takes glory. So you have appeased some demons. That is why blood pursues all those who tampered with them. In Ezekiel also chapter 36, Ezekiel chapter 36, I'll be looking at verses 17, 18, 19. He said, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their dreams. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman, as the uncleanness of, not of menses, but of a woman that had her virginity broken. She becomes unclean. That is what you do. One thing people don't know when they rape small girls, some of you are a relative, an uncle, a brother too, because you are living with your sister, so you keep raping the children, you know. And what you don't know is that you have made this child to hate herself. This child grows up to hate herself. This child grows up to hate everything about her. This child grows up and will not like their mother, will not like, will, so people say this child is rebellious. But there is something the child is hiding because you kept threatening the child. That you will kill the child if he says it. If he says it. Verse 18, he says, Wherefore, I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land. I don't know how many virgins you had tampered with. You've shed unqualified blood. In other words, you were not qualified to, to be the one to carry out that 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 bloodshed to break that teeth of the of the virginity you were not the one and not only that for their idols wherewith they had polluted it because there is a demon that is after you that is possessing you that is enjoying what you are doing and is pushing pushing your occiput to do it more and you are enjoying doing it more but i tell you you cannot escape this explains why there are too many unresolved spiritual problems too many unresolved spiritual complications you said i have tried everything i have tried everything i'm a child of god i can speak in tongue oh well done but what of the sins of tampering with the virginity of an innocent child in verse 19 he said and i scattered them among the heathens God scatters your work, scatters your life. There are some people that, up to 40 years, they don't have a good life. They can't have any ex well balanced, explained life. 35 years, they are still thinking that there are 10 years. That what is taking you backward is what you committed when you were 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 30. Some are still doing it, even at 60. They are still doing it. So, when will you part with the blood? When will you? And blood is pursuing you. Nothing good is coming your way. Blood is for, and you are still obeying that idol, that demon. That idol is a demon. Let's not say idol, and you begin to imagine that idol is a demon that is walking inside of you. So God says, because of this, He will scatter. So what would have belonged to you, your talent is scattered. You are in Nigeria, but your talent is is supposed to prosper in America, and you don't know you are here. It can't work. And the, your, your left leg is, uh, is in Jericho. Another, your ear. So you have problems of, you know, health that you get. To, they do all kinds of check in the hospital. 
They don't see anything because blood is pursuing you. Blood is pursuing you. Those are not the only uh, repercussions. In Hosea chapter 6, Hosea 6 verse 8, this is very in interesting. The Bible says Gilead is a city of them that walk iniquity. This can be a family problem. There are some homes, some, some men, big men, some traditional rulers. They sleep with their daughters. They pollute the children first. So Gilead is a city of them that walk iniquity and is polluted with what? With blood. Is that the kind of life you are living? In Ezekiel chapter 23, verse 23, he said the Babylonians and all the Chaldeans, because these are idol worshippers, Pekot and Shoah and Kwa and all the Assyrians with them, all of them desirable, they were all desirable young men, captains and rulers, great lords and renowned, all of them riding upon horses, yes, go on, 24, and they shall come against thee with chariots, wagons, wheels, and with an assembly of people, we shall set against thee, buckler, 25, and shield, and helmet, round about, and I will set judgment before them, and they shall judge thee according to their judgments. Now, what is he saying? People that you think they are worse than you, they will chase after you with success. They will block you. They will kill you. They will kidnap you. They will do all kinds of undesirable things. They themselves are not good people, but they come after you. So then you ask yourself, why are these people coming after me? It is because of the blood. Any blood that was, that was forcefully shed from what belongs to God without consent must be paid for. In the book of Genesis chapter 34, I'm not going to read this because it's a long story, where Jacob was asked to go back to Bethel and settle in Bethel. Now Jacob, instead of going to Bethel, went to Shechem and settled there. Then the only daughter Jacob had, Dinah, went out to see how the land is. That is how most girls become these virgins. They want to see, visit, visit their friend, their classmate, and the parents don't care. Oh, he's going to see a classmate. The classmate has brothers. And when they go, they will rape them there. They will come back and keep quiet. So that was, that was the fate of Dinah. Dinah was raped. And Simeon didn't like it. Levi didn't like it. And they plan and set up the people of Shechem and kill all of them. Now that is the kind of anger that, you know, tampering, raping a girl can lead to. So they kill a whole community, a whole city because of rape. How many people have you been raping? You that girl, you that woman, you that auntie. How many small boys that are related to you that you have spoiled? Or you that woman that is a house or a maid. They think that you are a mature lady, so they don't have any suspicion. But only God knows what you are playing, what nonsense you are playing with your little children, boys, when they are not there. You that, you that boy that is living in that house, smelling small girls pants and raping them when the parents are not there. You that driver, you that get man, you that man, you that worker, anywhere. Do you know that blood will pursue you? Blood pursued the people of Shechem. Levi killed them. Levi and Simeon went, circumcised them and killed them at the peak of their pains. And that brought Jacob down. Jacob said, oh, these people have solely depressed me. He went into depression. Just like the people you rape go into depression. Do you know that Dinah could not marry because of that abomination? Dinah could not marry. The same thing when David's uh, son slept with, the, uh, with his sister. The same thing happened. Those things are always creating serious family conflict. Where the family do not know, but problem exhumed. Because blood, blood, blood must always seek for blood. In the case of David, when the son said, oh, I want my sister to come and cook for me. But did he know, did he know that one day that his blood will be demanded because of that thing he did? Finally, he was killed. And finally, problem came up in, in, the, in the cabinet of um, David. 
Finally, David and his son had to wage war, had to struggle for throne, had to, if not that their son, God had to send judgment. But before the boy reacted originally, what brought this problem was rape. The pains in the hearts of parents when they know that you raped their child is enough for blood to pursue you all the days of your life. And I want to say that there is always a way out. There is always a way out. Raping a girl, raping a man, raping rape forcefully and forcing yourself into a woman are all acts that God will pursue you any day, any time. You know, look at what is happening in the world today. Top, top men of God. Men that would have been respectable. Oh, they gave them appointment. Somebody said, this man raped me. This one said, this man raped me. This one. That is the end of that appointment. Some shame. Some even go to trial in the court and are jail. That is how blood pursue them. Meanwhile, the society, the world is offering you a free society. You can do any of those things. It's a, it's a free world. But there will be a time when a responsibility of the land is to be placed on your head. Because that is what it should have been. Then, this blood will show up in your life. Jesus is offering you opportunity to do what is right. If you have surrendered your life to Jesus before, very good. You have to write to me using my email address. Say everything you have to say so that I will know how to advise you out. You know? But if you have been born again, you can still do same. But if you have never been born again and you have all these things locking up, still write to me. Like, comment on my Facebook, Lady Apostle Helen Okwabio. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel, Liberty Gospel Church Worldwide. And follow us also on Instagram, Liberty Gospel Church Worldwide. And God will really bless you. These are not light matters. And these are not messages you hear from every pulpit because most pastors are already